Armoured vehicles are patrolling the streets of the Zimbabwean capital Harare this afternoon after the army declared overnight that it was taking control of the country. Robert Mugabe, the 93-year-old president who's ruled Zimbabwe since independence from Britain in 1980, has been confined to his home. The British Embassy in Zimbabwe has advised UK nationals to stay indoors until the situation becomes clearer. Our diplomatic correspondent James Robbins reports. Snatched video, filmed furtively, tells some of the story. Troops on the streets of Harare as the generals take control after 37 years of President Mugabe's increasingly dictatorial rule. Heavy gunfire could be heard in parts of the capital early this morning, but the picture overall is of uncertain quiet. It looks as if the bulk of the army has been moving to secure its hold on Zimbabwe. Soldiers seized the headquarters of the state broadcaster ZBC, opening the way for a general to read out this statement. The situation in our country has moved to another level. Firstly, we wish to assure the nation that His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Commander-in-Chief of the Zimbabwe Defence Forces, Comrade Araji Mugabe and his family are safe and sound and their security is guaranteed. We are only targeting criminals around him who are committing crimes that are causing social and economic suffering in the country in order to bring them to justice. As soon as we have accomplished our mission, we expect that the situation will return this was President Robert Mugabe last week, very frail, seriously ill, renaming the country's main airport for himself, hoping perhaps to cement still further a cult of personality and try to make the succession of his wife, Grace, at his side more certain. But key military leaders now seem unwilling to see that happen. Mr Mugabe is now under house arrest, in office, but certainly not in power. And Grace, 40 years his junior, has helped split the entire ruling party, ZANU-PF. She was booed only 10 days ago at a party rally, and the army clearly blames her for leading a faction trying to destroy all opposition. Grace Mugabe is now reported to be out of the country, apparently seeking protection in Namibia. This is the man the army may favour, Emerson Umlangagwa, Mr Mugabe's vice president until he fired him last week. Army commanders were determined to stop the purge. He definitely saw himself as a front-runner to succeed until his sacking and flight into exile. Now Britain, the former colonial power, is urging calm. Our ambassador has been in touch to say that obviously if UK nationals uh, are worried they should get in touch with, uh, with our embassy. At the moment it's, it's very fluid and it's, it's hard to say exactly how uh, this will turn out. I think the most important point to make is that everybody wants to see a stable and, uh, and successful uh, Zimbabwe and I think we're really appealing for everybody to refrain from violence. That's the crucial thing. Harare does appear to be generally quiet. Zimbabweans will be nervous after enduring decades of often violent rule and the catastrophic economic collapse of a once thriving economy. Zimbabwe's powerful neighbour, South Africa, is also calling for calm and restraint. I am hoping that the defence force will not move and do more damage, that they will be able to respect the constitution of Zimbabwe as well as the people of Zimbabwe so that this situation does not go beyond <clears throat> uh, the situation where it is now. This morning's newspaper headline on the streets of Harare highlights the tension between Army Chief General Chiwenga and President Mugabe. But events have moved a long way since those words were printed. James Robbins, BBC News. Well, Nyoko Shinghai is the BBC's reporter in Harare. A short time ago, she gave us the very latest on the situation there.
The presence of the military is being felt here on the streets of Harare, and some parts of the city are in lockdown. Now, this is as close as we can get to some of the military tanks that have stationed themselves in strategic positions. One, as you can see here, has blocked off access to the president's office. There's another that's blocked off access to parliament. Now, Zimbabweans woke up this morning to the news that the military had taken control of the capital. In the town, you Christmas <laughs> In the early hours of the morning, following an evening of gunfire and explosions, the military took over the state broadcaster and they made an announcement that this is not a coup and that President Robert Mugabe is still in charge and that he's the head of state. But as you can see on the street here, it's clear who's calling the shots. The city is subdued and the military have said that they will make arrests of people who they say have destroyed the party, criminal elements around President Mugabe. President Mugabe is expected to make a statement, but the end game of all of this is unclear. The question that many Zimbabweans have is how will this all end? Shingai Nyoka, BBC News. Well, British nationals living in Zimbabwe are being warned to stay indoors by the Foreign Office. It says, due to the uncertain political situation in Harare, including reports of unusual military activity, we recommend British nationals currently in Harare to remain safely at home or in their accommodation until the situation becomes clearer. The Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, urged everyone in Zimbabwe to refrain from violence. We're monitoring the situation very closely, as you can uh, imagine, and uh, uh, our ambassador has been in touch to say that obviously if UK nationals uh, are worried, they should get in touch with, uh, with our embassy. At the moment, it's, it's very fluid, and it's, it's hard to say exactly how uh, this will turn out. I think the most important point to make is that everybody wants to see a stable and, uh, and successful uh, Zimbabwe and I think we're really appealing for everybody to refrain from violence. That's the crucial thing. Well, let's get the latest now from our correspondent Milton and Cozy, who's in Johannesburg. Uh, it looks like a coup, it sounds like a coup, but they're saying it's not a coup. Well, Simon, if it does look like a coup and sounds like a coup, I'm with you. It looks like a coup to all of us because once you see an army general on the normal television screen and where there's no broadcast, we hear that there's no broadcast going on on ZBC. They've been playing old liberation songs and on the radio, uh, chants of the Chimuranga, which was the uh, liberation struggle against white minority rule. So it does seem like President Robert Mugabe is under pressure from his own military and we're still waiting for clarity as to who is now in charge of Zimbabwe. The clarity that is coming through, this looks like internal politics. This is about the future of ZANU-PF. Very much so. That is a very important point to make because what's have happened in Zimbabwe, it's not like the opposition has come and taken over the government. This is an internal fight within ZANU-PF. And what had uh, triggered these events was the sacking of the vice president by President Robert Mugabe himself paving the way for his wife, Grace Mugabe, to take over from him. Now, uh, many in the military who fought in the liberation struggle found that unacceptable. They said Zimbabwe is not a dynasty. Uh, they've got to have people who fought for the liberation of the country from colonial rule to be in charge of the country, not someone like Grace Mugabe, who was once a typist in Robert Mugabe's office. This is quite a gamble, though, because the inevitable question is, what now? Well, that's why President Zuma had to come in there. He is the chairman of the regional body, SADC, uh, that is the uh, neighbors uh, surrounding uh, Zimbabwe. And he sent two envoys from South Africa this afternoon to go and speak to President Robert Mugabe directly and to the Zimbabwean defense force to try and clarify the situation. You will know that, Simon, the African Union and uh, sub-region like SADC uh, do not accept 
uh, the unconstitutional change of government. And therefore, those who are uh, running Zimbabwe now from the military uh, would know that, that uh, they would be completely suspended by SADC if they announce that they are in charge. So the likelihood is that they're going to uh, announce that Emerson Mnagangwa, the vice president who was sacked a week ago, will be in charge. And therefore, the party that was elected by the people in the previous election will still be in charge of government. Milton, thank you so much. Milton Cozy there in Johannesburg. Well, with me now is George Shire, a Zimbabwean political analyst who was in the country as recently, I think, as September. Mm -hmm. So does what's happened in the last 24 hours come as a, a huge surprise to you? No, not at all. Um, <clears throat> quite rightly, what's been going on has been a struggle of power within Zambia about what could happen or what should happen post-2018 election. And I think the kind of the purges, if I can put it that way, been going on in Zambia begins in 2015. They're not a sort of event of the last week. What I was able to notice when I was in Zimbabwe is the overwhelming popular support that Mnangwagwa has across the party and across the country. And if you listen to the clip that your correspondent made of the two uh, people from the street are talking about, they are happy. They are looking forward to a better Christmas, they say, because that is indicative of the kind of support that you have. So what you're going to see is... Well, a and that's exactly why Robert Mugabe exactly. acted, presumably. Well, which is what I could put. What, what is happening then is a reordering of the leadership of ZANU not the same thing as a coup as most people begin to talk about it. And if you think about it that way, then one has to look again at what the, I mean, the two army general statements are and what Zuma has actually said have having almost a choreographing effect. And the question is likely to be how to manage this particular moment so that there is a re reclaiming of the heart and soul of ZANU-PF into the next election. He's 93 years old, but Robert Mugabe still has his supporters, and that's got to be something they're concerned about. This issue is not about Robert Mugabe versus the people. This has been to do with the Generation 40, they call themselves, who had become kind of excluded, if you like, Robert Mugabe from the traditional support base he had. And that's what's brought this thing into focus. So if you listen again to what the army is saying, none of them have removed, have, they continue to describe Robert Mugabe as the commander and leader of the armed forces. They have that respect for him. What is, perhaps what is comparative is the moment in which the previous leader of ZANU, um, Dabering Stolle, was deposed from the leadership of ZANU. And when Robert Mugabe came in, the criticism of Stolle at the time was that he had become too, Power had become too personal for him, which is the same criticism some people, some people are talking about, which is not the same thing as saying they simply want to take over. And I think, and I think part of that, part of what's happened is to the capture of the president, if you like, by the G40. And that's what has produced this particular tension. So I think it will be interesting to see how Zuma's negotiation team gets into conversation with the ZANU High Command. The, the opposition is simply out of the picture because they haven't got a credible, much as one might love them, a, co a coherent alternative that commands hegemonically the political cultures and non politics. So when the history is written about this particular moment in Zimbabwe's history, mm -hmm. will it be seen as the moment that Robert Mugabe misunderstood that he had not built a dynasty strong enough where he could just let his wife slip into the job. No, not again. I think Zimbabwean politics is not... I know a lot of people talk about... But, but personalities are important. No, and wait, she was, wait, she, wait, if I could just finish. I think the, 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 Robert Mugabe's position was not in question. I think the, what has happened tragically is to do with the power struggle that's been going on around him. That's what's happened. So this moment will be read as what happened in that power struggle, not so much about Robert Mugabe, but these kind of factions who were seeing themselves as the anointed ones. And that's one thing. The second thing is a reminder of the, the way in which the, the liberation movement, the armed struggle, the war veterans, the military, are the stitches that, that, that put together the story of Zimbabwe. That is a reminder in that way.
So who, very briefly, who will the international community be dealing with when they want to talk to the leader of Zimbabwe in the next few months? The, it, it, it remains to be seen, but if just if I can back off from that for a minute, I'll come back to it in a slightly different way. Up to until two or three months, two or three weeks ago, if you ask people in Zimbabwe, if you ask people in the Sadoc region, if you ask people on the continent, if you ask people in the new economies, whom they think has the kind of political cultural capital within ZANU circles to, to succeed Robert Mugabe, Nangwagwa is. When I attended some of the rallies that have been going on in the summer, and I went to one or two of them, and I saw firsthand the reception Nangwagwa was getting, it was like the arrival of a rock star. So the E is the pair of steady hand in that sense. So he, he, it's impossible to remove him. It was a bad miscalculation on the G40 to think they could write him off history. Well, George, it's very good to talk to you about this. George Shire, thank you very much. That's thank okay. You.